Thank you very much. Great question. Um, you will have heard, I mean, we have announced our Roadmap E, uh, which will bring 50 fully electric vehicles onto the road um, between now and 2025. Um, in addition, 30 in, in plug-in hybrid vehicles. Um, so we aim to sell two to three million electric vehicles um, in 2020. Translated into capacity, this equates to 150 gigawatt hour demand globally, just for us. Just in relation, I mean, that is um, three times as much as the global supply available in 2015. So we have secured um, for the first wave of electric vehicles, um, which will start going on the road from 2019, we have secured our, ROM, um, our battery supply um, through our strategic partners. And um, in addition, we work on building um, up competency on our, on, our, on our side in terms of development uh, capabilities, in terms of process know-how, in terms of um, quality assurance, in terms of um, procurement, project management know-how. We've all bundled that into a center of excellence um, where we have, as of today, already 100 experts working in. We will have 250 um, by 2020. And uh, in order to get to a build-to-print uh, competency in, um, for, for battery cells, um, so we get less dependent on the, on the suppliers. And in parallel, I mean, we are working with, um, with our suppliers um, to secure um, raw material access for the critical raw materials. And um, we are also working to find um, innovative um, cell chemistries to reduce critical raw materials in, in our batteries. But for sure, the capacity ramp up is a, is a huge task to the industry, particularly to the supply industry. And we will very closely monitor this. Well, I think uh, let's start from the, the, the importance of the battery in an electric vehicle going forward. So the battery will account for 30% of the future vehicle cost um, in an electric car. So it's the key component um, in, in an electric vehicle. And as of today, the supply base for batteries um, and the know-how base for batteries um, is in, in, in Asia. It's in China, it's in Japan, um, it's in Korea. And um, from our standpoint, it's a, it's a strategic imperative um, for the European Union um, to catch up in that uh, strategic technology. So in that regard, um, the, the Battery Alliance, I think, can help. Um, it can help in terms of, uh, let's say, in, uh, coordinating our research landscape and to focus on the, on the right technologies going forward. And on those technologies then, that can provide, let's say, a European supply basic te technolo technological edge over the Asian suppliers. Uh, it can help to identify who might be the leaders um, to spearhead the, um, the European battery um, production. Uh, it can also help um, to bridge um, a period of non-competitiveness um, for those um, suppliers, whoever that will be. As of today, I mean, we don't have the uh, champion in, in, in battery manufacturing on an on a industrial scale. So um, from the start, that company will need um, some support um, to, to ensure it's competitive and um, that, uh, that, that actually the car industry accepts those batteries in the, in the vehicles. Um, the EU Battery Alliance can also help in terms of um, finding the right ways um, to secure um, access to critical raw materials, um, particularly um, lithium and even more so um, to, to cobalt um, to avoid any dependencies. And it can, uh, can help to coordinate um, policies around um, um, battery recycling um, to yeah, be less dependent on the, on the raw material sector going forward and to get to a, to a circular economy. And uh, last comment on com competitiveness, I think it also can help um, to, to make sure we have got competitive energy cost, which is a, bit, a big cost component in the total bill of material for battery cells.